vague language will make your speech more colorful. If you want to sound natural in English, you should definitely use vague language. What is vague language? Vague language is a language that is not precise. When we don't want to sound too definite, we use vague expressions. Vague language is common especially in speaking. Simply put, Vague language is words and phrases that are neither exact nor precise. People often use these phrases when they are not sure about something, to save time in a conversation, or to speak informally in a friendly manner. What are examples of vague language? How do I use them in speaking? The following vague expressions will make you sound natural, of course, if you use them. Take, for instance, loads, tons, plenty of, they mean a large amount of something. For example, he earns tons of money. I see loads of people in the street. We have plenty of time. A couple of, a few, mean an indefinite small number of things or people. For instance, see you in a couple of hours. I have a few ideas. Words like stuff and thing I use to refer to things when it is obvious what you're talking about or you don't know the name or the name isn't important. For instance, how much did you pay for this stuff? What is this thing you're holding? Expressions and stuff and stuff like that are used to refer to things that are similar or related to the subject you've just mentioned, but you're not gonna say what they are. For example, let's grab dinner, have a few drinks and stuff. I do mountain biking, skiing and stuff like that. We use the whole thing and the whole bit to describe everything that is involved in a particular activity or situation or in being a particular type of person. I'm doing this whole thing for you. He's into yoga and spiritual stuff, but he hates the whole exercise bit. Fill your speech with more color, use or something or anything and everything. Let's take a look at the following dialogue. Come on in, have a sit. Would you like a coffee or something? I'm good, I've just had one. Listen, have you heard the news about Greg? He's quit his job, left his wife and everything, and he's going to Australia to work as a surfing instructor. Really? What about his family, friends and stuff? His friends think he's crazy or something. It looks like that. He hasn't told his parents about leaving his wife or anything yet. His mom won't be happy about it. She could cut him off or something. To cut someone off is to disinherit them, to live without money. Here is more vague expressions to make your speech natural. About give or take, more or less, are used to talk about numbers or quantities that are not exact. For example, the trip took about two hours. That's 25 feet, give or take. The project was more or less a success. Roughly is used to show that an amount, number, time, etc. is not exact. The meeting took roughly 30 minutes. Roughly speaking is used to give information that is general and not exact. Roughly speaking, he earns 250 grand a year. Generally speaking is used to show that what you're saying is usually true, but not necessarily all the time. Generally speaking, parents love their children. Generally speaking, the more you learn, the better your English gets. However, it's not always the case. To learn why you might not feel progress, even though you put so much effort in learning English, Check out this video. And we're moving on. Kind of is used when you're talking about someone or something in a general way without being very exact or definite. She's kind of strange. It's kind of late. That's actually how this expression sounds. Kinda. Kinda. To have something to do with is used to say that something is related to something else or someone is related to someone else. Their business has something to do with sales. She has something to do with him. They may be related. To learn about structure, to have something, nothing, anything, everything to do with, check out this video or find it in the description below. Expressions somehow and one way or another are used when the specific detail about how something is or was done are not important or unknown, at least just yet. Somehow we'll make it work. Somehow we'll figure it out one way or another will make our dreams come true. And so on and so forth are used instead of mentioning more of a similar type of thing that has already been mentioned. For example, people have a right to their own culture, their own religion, their own language, and so on. 
they ask me my full name, address, and so forth. When it comes to vague language, we can also use ish. Is ish even a word? Ish is a suffix which means approximately about. For example, we are meeting Todd at four ish. More direct would be we are meeting Todd at four. What's interesting, ish can work as an adverb. It's used to modify something that was previously stated. It's also used as a vague reply to a question. It means somewhat, in a way, not exactly. For example, are you happy? Yeah, ish. It's a decent-ish restaurant. When can vague expressions be impolite? Keep in mind that intonation adds to the meaning of vague language in specific situations. Expressions such as stuff and whatever, whoever, whenever, whichever are sometimes used in an impolite way. These are especially impolite when they are used in a reply to a direct question asked by someone who's senior or superior, like your parent or boss. Let's take a look at the following examples. What were you doing in the garage? Stuff. This is not a polite reply. It can mean I don't want to talk to you or I don't want to talk about it. You're always on the phone, whatever. This is a very impolite response and it means I don't care. We are meeting around 7 at Mel's place. No, the party starts at 6. Well, whenever. This is not as impolite as the previous ones because it is between friends. Just uses whenever to show that he's annoyed and that it doesn't really matter what time the party starts, 6 or 7, he doesn't really care. If you want to learn more about whatever, whoever, whenever, check out this video.